Hello friends, today we are going to talk about the topic of simulation. Essentially in this video my aim is to introduce the topic of simulation to you. So let us start. Let me uh, bring up my presentation here. Okay, we are ready to go. So as I mentioned, today's topic is simulation. We will introduce simulations today and we will try to see how simulations can be helpful in our life for solving some problems. So let us go ahead and understand the motivation behind studying simulation. So now in real life, if you are facing a problem that you have been given a random vector x with some joint density function f of x1, x2, xn. Remember that this random vector x is composed of n one dimensional random variables x1, x2, xn. And then the pers person who is asking may be interested in finding not the behavior of random variable x but the behavior of a function associated with this random vector x that is g of x. The first step to understand this random variable or this function is you can compute expected value of g of x. Now are there any guiding principles in the theory of probability? Yes, there are some guiding principles. One guiding principle is the law of unconscious statisticians abbreviated as LOTUS. It says that you, I don't really need to know the distribution of G, but what I can do is I can simply use this law of unconscious statistician and I can compute the expected value of G of X using this n fold integral. Now the question that arises is, is this n fold integral always computable? Typically you take this joint density to be a joint normal density and you try to integrate it, it may become very cumbersome to integrate such an integral unless you are already aware of things. So analytically, it may not be possible to find expected value of g of x. But now comes the numerical version. If I do numerical approximation, that is if I use some function like n integrate, or some other function which uh, you may be familiar with in some of the softwares. So if I use such functions, can I compute it? The answer is the numerical approximation in some cases may not yield the desired accuracy. If the numerical approximations themselves are not yielding the desired accuracy, then it's worth, it's not worth trying the exercise. In such cases, where the, the integral is not analytically computable and the numerical approximation is not yielding the desired accuracy. The question that can be asked is, is there any easy way out? The answer is yes, there is one possibility. And what is that possibility? That possibility is by means of simulation. So you can actually consider a simulation approach to compute this integral. Now, how will we consider a simulation approach? Will be a next natural, natural question. So, to our aid comes one famous approach that is called Monte Carlo approach. What does this Monte Carlo approach will do? Here, what it will do is it will generate a random vector, first iteration of a random vector, x superscript bracketed one which individually generates n copies of x1, x2, xn. Individual random variables having joint density function f of x1, x2, xn. Now, the next step that you will do is you will compute a random variable y1, which is nothing but g of x1. Now, if you can understand this particular step, that means I am assigning y1 is equal to g of x1. What will it fetch me? It fetches me is y1 at same distribution as g of x1. Correct? I still don't know what is the distribution of y1. But my goal is not to know the distribution of y1, but to know its expected value. Correct? So now, what will guide me to the next step? 
for that we will appeal to something called law of large numbers in order to appeal to the law of large numbers i need to generate at least some iterations of this particular random vector x and correspondingly the random vector random variables yis so let us do that for r steps okay. each iteration we are assuming to be independent so the random variables yi i equal to 1 to r generated will be independent and identically distributed once you have generated these random variables then what comes to my aid is strong law of large numbers what is strong law of large numbers if i have been given a family of random variables with same mean and they are independent then if i take average of those random variables and let n tend to infinity then i will get what is the mean of the random variable i will apply the same principle over here and try to re regain the expected value of yis so using strong of large strong law of large numbers it is easy to get the expected value of yi voila what you have just achieved is expected value of gx as r tending to infinity so this expected value of gx will serve a purpose of getting the average for this function gx without knowing the distribution of gx so in particular the average of yis is approximately equal to expected value of gx whenever all other things the all other other two difficulties don't arise we can actually compute the expected value of gx and we can check that the both values will be very close to each other this approach is very popularly known as monte carlo simulation approach but in this approach we have made one assumption what is the assumption i am able to actually bring these x1 x2 xn i am able to find x1 x2 xn which join density f of x1 x2 xn i still don't know how to do it so in the next slide we will pose this as a question and we will try to answer this question so the question is how to generate or simulate the random vectors having specified joint distribution what can be the solution so having specified joint distribution it is difficult to answer this question in general so what we will do is as a first step we will try to generate a uniform random variable which is uniform on g interval 0 1 a continuous uniform random variable and try to see if we can do it assume that right now we don't have any computer and we want to simulate a uniform random variable how will you do it that is what we will see next so next topic is generation of uniform random variable a manual method so now if i want to represent a uniform random variable 0 to 1 few things i want to point out the first thing is i will be looking for a decimal representation of that uniform random number variable that i am going to generate right? for example it, any random variable between uniform 0 1 can be 0.5 0.47 8 9 blah 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 correct so in such cases i need a decimal representation so to mimic the decimal representation here is our first step take 10 identical slips of paper you can number them with 0 1 2 and so on up to n once you have numbered them with 0 1 2 and n what do you do you take one hat put all the uh, slips into that hat and mix them well once you have mixed them you can take out one slip at a time okay now you take one slip you note the number and you replace it again into the hat again mix them well and again do the same thing how long you should continue till the precision that you need so this is the next step place all the slips in one hat 
successively select n slips with replacement from that hat. What will that fetch me? That will give me a sequence of numbers, a sequence of numbers which are between 0 to 9. And once I get that sequence of number, I will just club that sequence of numbers into a, into a number or click club the sequence of digits into a number and precede it with one decimal point. Once I have preceded that thing with a decimal point, what I got is a uniform random number rounded off to nearest 10 raised to minus n digits. So this is what you will get. Let us demonstrate this with an example. Suppose I have a sequence of digits which are selected in four iterations. For example, these are the four iterations. I have selected the numbers four times. So the digits selected are four, six, seven, and eight. Then according to this algorithm, the number that I will generate is 0.4678. This will be a number which is correct up to four decimal places. This is a number which is correct up to four decimal places and which is uniform, of course. This is uniform random number. So this way, if I want to go for five decimal places, I can still go ahead and have one more interest. This is what used to happen in a pre-computer era. Now we are in the world of computers. So we have to understand when we tell a computer to generate a random number or a random variable from uniform zero one, what is computer doing? So our next algorithm will be in that line. So most of you must have coded in computer. In particular, in our experience, when we are dealing with random variables, if we want the iterations to be reproduced, we do something called set seed. We will set the seed to some number. So initially computers are using something which is by setting the seed. What is this seed? So seed is something that makes computer to start with some value. So the initial value x0 which is given to the computer will be called as a seed. Once we have the seed, what this computer will do is many processors will do the same thing. It will choose three numbers, A, C and M. Depending on the choice of these numbers, they will compute one relation, recursive relation, which is given in this particular expression, given by this particular thing. Xn plus one is equal to Axn xn plus 1 is equal to a xn plus c modulo m. What does this mean? This means xn plus 1 stores the reminder of the division of a xn plus c divided by m. Once we have this, once we have this, we will actually put the value of un, which is xn divided by m as a uniform 0, 1 random variable. What we are doing here is we are always generating a number which actually belongs to 0, 1 to m minus 1. In the previous case, when we considered the manual representation of uniform random number, we have fixed that number m to 10. So here also we are doing something similar to that. But what we started with is x0. So that is a seed which we have not started in the manual generation. So as you can understand, if you compare both the algorithms together, the algorithm has some fixations into it. For example, in this particular case, the fixation is the seed and the recursive relation, the choice of values a, c and m. Though we have chosen m, in the manual iteration, here M can be anything. So now here are some remarks on the way, which we have already observed. First, your number Xn will always lie between 0, 1, 2 and so on to M minus 1. 
is because I have used a modulo relation. Second, we will though we will not prove, but it can always be shown that for a suitable choice of A, C, and M, the algorithm gives a sequence of numbers which are similar to IID uniform random variables because in each for each iteration of n you are getting one number un so these uns are not really random numbers but they will be term, termed as pseudo random numbers so these uns are pseudo random numbers now let us try to understand how we can use these pseudo random numbers or the random numbers that we have generated manually in order to do some practical simulation. For example, let us take an example where we are considering a random permutation. So what is our goal in this case? In random permutation, we are interested in generating a permutation of numbers 1 to n such a way that all n factorial combinations are equally likely. This is a hefty goal. We, have, we want to achieve this goal. So how will you achieve this goal? So in, for that, we need some deliberations. So we will consider an algorithm which is supposed to achieve this particular goal. So, so let us try to see what that algorithm is. So in this algorithm, what we will do is, we will start with some permutation. We'll start with some permutation and uh, we need to generate a random permutation. So let us say P1, P2, Pn is any permutation of numbers 1 to n. Let me pull this video bar at the bottom so that it will not obstruct your view. Hmm. So I have a permutation of 1 to n. Let us say for our understanding, let us put it like the permutation pj is equal to j. That means it's an identity permutation. So we are starting with an identity permutation. Then there are two choices. Either I can switch the numbers or I can switch the places. We will prefer so for any permutation, the position is 1 to n. Right now, the, at position 1, number 1 is there. At position 2, number 2 is there. That position n, number n is there. That is what we mean by identity permutation. Now, there are two choices. You can keep the number same and you can switch the positions. You can switch the positions or you can choose the numbers and put them in different positions. Both of them will fetch the same impact. So we are choosing that we will choose the position and we will swap the positions. Okay. So the numbers corresponding will be swapped. So in this particular case, let P1, P2, Pn be any permutation of 1 to n. For instance, we have taken it to be an identity permutation. Now we will identify k is equal to n. So we have chosen nth position. That is the number which belongs to the set pn we have chosen nth position and now what we will do is we will use our knowledge of generating uniform random variable to switch the position of this n with some other random number and which with some other random position how will i achieve that is the question so in this particular case i have generated a uniform random number u this number lies between 0 and 1. Now the challenge here is all the positions are integers. So I want to convert this into an integer form. So whatever number I have got is uniform 0, 1. So if I multiply this number with a, with a factor of k, which is n here, then what I will get is ku. And this ku, from basic theory of probability or theory of distributions I know is uniform random variable in the interval 0 to k. Okay. Then what I will do is because I want some integer to be generated as a random 
So what I will do is I will use this greatest integer function of k u, which makes it an integer. But because it is a greatest integer function, it steps down by one behind. So, so to make it more precise, I have added plus one. Now consider this new random variable i is equal to k u plus one. What is the distribution of this? For that, let us go to this footnote. So if I consider probability of i is equal to i, this i can vary between 0, 1, 2, up to k. Can it take the value 0? No, it cannot. Okay. So i will vary from 1 to k. And then this i, you can always see, you can do some transformation and see that this i is related to u. So essentially you will get probability of i minus 1 by k less than u less than i by k which is equal to 1 by k because u is a uniform random variable. So each partition of 1 by k will give a probability of 1 by k. Therefore what I got here is k u plus 1 probability of i is equal to i is equal to 1 by k. What is my k here? If I am doing the first iteration, k is equal to n. So among these n places, all positions are equally likely to be chosen. This is the key idea. All positions are equally likely to be chosen. That is where I am respecting this hypothesis and that is why I need uniform random variable. Once I have chosen this position i, so whatever i is generated, you can actually swap the value pi with pk. So if k is equal to n, the value swapped pi with pn. So the value at position n will now switch to the value at ith position, which is randomly chosen. Okay. Now what happens? Now because you have done a transformation at nth place, you come to n minus 1th place. So you set k is equal to k minus 1. And if k is greater than 1, you go back to step 3. That is, you interchange the values of pi and pk. And you continue this till k is greater than 1. Then the permutation that you have got will be p1, p2, pn, which is a desired permutation. Now let me demonstrate this with an example. Though it may feel vague uh, from the algorithm, when we will see the example, um, it will be more clear. So I have attached a snap of this in this particular slide. So in this particular case, let us choose the number of permutation, the numbers on which we are doing a permutation is 1, 2, 3, 4. So I have n is equal to 4 and the initial permutation is identity permutation and as given here in step 2, we have chosen k is equal to n. So once k is equal to 4, you, you will go on, you will generate a random number. So let us see, we, uh, let us understand that we have done a random permutation. We have generated a random number u and from that we got the number i that i is equal to 3. Okay. So this permutation, this particular generation is done on a four point set. This is the key factor. Now, because i is equal to 3, what will happen? The next step in this iteration is interchange the values of pi and pk. So what we will do is, we will change the values of p3 and p4. What are the values of p3 and p4? They are 3 and 4 namely. So we will get a new permutation that is 1, 2, 4, 3. And then you will set k is equal to k minus 1. So 4 minus 1 that is 3. So your set is k is equal to 3. Now what will be the next step? Then I will check whether k is greater than 1. Yes, it is greater than 1. Once I understand that it is greater than 1, I have to again go back according to this algorithm to step 3. So I will go to step 3. Again I will generate another iteration of i. This time it will be a 3 point set. What are those three points? One, two, and four. If you look at the positions, they are, the positions are one, two, and three. So in this case, i is chosen to be equal to two. 
now i is equal to 2 the last position the k pk is 3 so p2 and p3 will be interchanged so because p2 and p3 will be interchanged you can look at this particular iteration 1 2 4 3 4 and 2 should be interchanged and therefore you will get a new permutation 1 4 2 3 now again with k is equal to 2 so k is equal to k minus 1 has taken care of k is equal to 2 is k greater than 1 the answer is yes because k is greater than 1 again go back again choose one i and in that case now again it turned out that i is equal to 2 then it's basically p2 to p2 there is no transfer so it will set there and therefore the final iteration is 1 4 2 3 okay and this is the desired permutation for our purposes so this brings me to the end of introduction slide